to introduction to AP Computer Science Unit 6, Arrays, or Arrays, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, so this video, just to let you know, is being recorded much, much later than the first five videos. Uh, the first five videos I did last summer uh, in preparation for the course, and now we've kind of caught up to those videos, and now I'm making Unit 6. Uh, arrays and arrays. So let's get started. Um, an array, in case you don't know, is just a way of, in my mind, of bundling uh, similar information. So for example, let's say we had like int score uh, 1 and equals, let's say, 50. And we said int score 2 equals 100. Int score 3 equals, you know, you know, 75, etc., etc. Now, if we only have a few scores, this is perfectly acceptable. But what if we had, say, 100 scores, or a million scores, or, or a larger data set? And what we would do in that case is we would use something called an array. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So, uh, section 6.1, array uh, creation and access. So we're going to learn how to create an array. And we're going to learn how to access uh, the information in that array. Um, so it's very similar. If you notice what I just did, I had int score equals something. Uh, with an array, what we need to do is do something like this. We put square brackets, depending on where you're from, you might call them something different. Um, put square brackets. We give the array a name. Now notice in this case, um, I used scores. I used a plural noun uh, because it's very descriptive of what the information is. Now, if I put score, it kind of doesn't make sense, especially later when we, we do certain things with loops, which you'll see in a few minutes. Um, and then I have to put equals new, and I have to put the type again. So we got int here one time, we got int here another. And in this case, I'm going to put the number seven there. Uh, and the seven was chosen just semi at randomly. I have seven students in my class right now. Um, so seven wonderful students. And so I thought I'd be use that number. Um, so if you remember back to the string unit, if you if you watch that video or if you've been studying AP computer science, um, this will be kind of similar to how we accessed uh, strings and, and the characters in that in that string. Uh, so anyway, so what I've done here is I've created an array of scores and it is seven items long so what I can do now is I can start assigning values now just a little thing uh, I didn't have to use in here I could have used double and then I could put double here oops not couple double uh, I could have done boolean uh, I could have done any of the primitives and I can also do objects or reference types whatever you want to call them uh, so I can also do strings now, when I create this array, I'm going to go back to int there. Uh, when I create the array, there are some default values added. So it doesn't, you know, so basically if it's ints, um, well, I'll have an array of seven ints. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in here, default values. Uh, so if it's an int, it is zero. If it is a double, it is 0.0. .0. And so I like my formatting consistent. Uh, if it is a Boolean, it is going to be false. Okay. Now, if it is an object or reference or a reference type, I should say, um, like a string, it will be uh, so I'll say reference type. It will become null because we haven't actually defined what it is yet. Okay. So you can count on that being zero, uh, or in this case of ints, it will be zero. So what I can do is I'm, now I can access each item by its index. Okay, so we have seven items, and just like with strings, the first index is actually gonna be zero. So here I'm gonna, I'm gonna assign some values, and I can say like this. So for example, scores zero equals, uh, let's say 100, so I did very well. Scores one uh, equals 90. So in my array, I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not 7, because there's 7 items, but we start at index 0, just as we did with strings. Okay, so now what I can do is I can actually print that information out. So I'm going to say system.out.println, 
and I'm gonna say scores zero. So if you can, hopefully you can predict. So this is this. So we can just substitute in 100 basically. And then I'm kind of lazy, so I'm gonna copy this. Oops, no, not good. And there we go, scores, I'm gonna print out scores one. And what I can also do is I can do things like this, score zero plus scores one. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And oops, you see some of the assignment from earlier. So you can see 100, score zero is 100, scores one is 90, and then you know 100 plus 90 is 190. Now just to show you, if I did print out, let's say scores two and scores three, for example, doesn't matter what order at this point, it should be zero because that's the default value. Okay. Now also, just to show you what happens, if I do try to access number seven or eight or nine, something outside the range, you're gonna see the type of error we get. Okay, so exception in thread main, you'll see an array index out of bounds exception. It tells us seven is wrong. Okay, because it's going to be 7 minus 1 because it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let me just put that back the way it was. Okay, so that was an array of integers. Okay, so yeah, that's one thing. Now let's try, just, just for fun, I don't know, fun means a relative term, let's try an array of strings. It, it functions the same way. Okay, array of strings. So I'm going to make a new array against string. Okay. Now this should look very familiar. You've probably been seeing this all year or since you started studying Java. You never quite knew what it was, but now you do. So args is going to be a, an array of string arguments. And that is passed to the, the program when you run it. Uh, if you're using, say, the command line or calling it through the system thingy. Uh, I know, a very technical term, system thingy. Uh, so, anyway, so I'm going to do some names. And again, new string. And in this case, I'm going to do seven. But again, you can do any number here. Uh, you can even do zero. Um, but you can't leave it blank because you'll get an error. Okay, so you have to put something there. You can have an empty array, although I'm not quite sure why you would do that, but apparently you can do that, which I found quite interesting. Um, so I'm going to do, go ahead and do seven. And I'm going to add a few names. And I'm say zero. And these are some old friends of mine, not my students. Uh, oops, names one equals Jen. And names two equals jr. And I like to give a shout out to my my old, my old peeps. Um, so again, same thing. I can print these out. System dot out dot print out n and names. Oops, I'm not putting quotes. Names zero. Oops. Copy that out. Okay. And let's see. One and two, and I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to go ahead and just print three here, uh, just to show you what happens. I'm going to show you that it should be null, I believe. Okay, so it's got Scott, Jen, Jr, and null because we never said what names three was. Again, just a reminder, we're starting at index zero. Um, so this is one way of creating a list. Um, sorry, list. That's that's Python. I apologize. Um, I do a lot of Python programming. Anyway, so this is one way of doing an array. So we create the empty array first. Um, we define the size. One of the things with arrays uh, is that once you set the size, it is set. You can't expand it. You can't shrink it because you're setting aside a certain amount of memory. Um, so you need to make sure that you know exactly how much uh, space you need. Uh, you know, maximum case. So you need to think about how you're going to use your memory. Uh, today's computers are pretty, you know, there's tons of memory. It's not such a big deal, but it's something you might want to consider. Uh, yeah, that's one way. Now, in a case where you actually already know uh, what you want to put into the array at the beginning, you may want to pre-populate your array. Um, so for example, so we use something called an array initializer list. So the format's very, very similar. Um, so let's see, what can we do here? Um, let's do cities. Um, so I'm gonna do a string again. And I'm gonna say cities equals, actually not new. And I do like this. 
And I'm going to put some cities in there. Now I live in Tokyo, so I'm going to put Tokyo in there. Uh, I've also lived in Seoul. Uh, let's see, I lived in Bucharest. And yeah, those are probably the three places, uh, three capital cities I've lived in in my life. And so now ask yourself, how long is this particular list? What is the length of the list? And clearly it's one, two, three. However, the index is zero, one, two. So this maybe is a good spot to figure out how, well, let's, see, let's print that out real quick. Um, so system.out.println, and I'm gonna say cities, oops, cities zero. Um, cities zero. And again, I'm just gonna copy that. Cities one and cities two. So again, the thing here is you gotta keep in mind, I've only made room for three cities. Um, so if I need more, I should have used a different method of you know, defining this. Now for something like days of the week, you know there's only going to be seven days of the week. So you can just define that right at the beginning and you know what the answer is. Now real quick, to get the length, uh, the length or the size, depending on how you wanna put it, uh, is very similar to strings, but just a little different to make it complicated. Um, so what I can say here is I can say system.out.println. It's the array name dot length. Okay. Notice there are no parentheses here. Okay. If it's a string, you got to put parentheses because it's a method. If it's an array, you use the attribute length, so no parentheses. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay. And you can see how we got Seoul. Uh, we got Tokyo, Seoul, and Bucharest. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just to make this a little bit, make the formatting a little bit nicer, I'm going to print out print ln uh, a blank space at the end here. I'm sorry, I should say a blank line after my print statements. And do we have any more? Nope. Okay, and then at the end here, put that for, again, this is just for formatting for my output. Okay, so we've got our integers, we've got our strings, and we've got more strings of some cities that, yeah, I've lived in. Uh, again, I, I do still do live in Tokyo. At this point in time, it is 2020. Crazy to think we are in the future. Okay, so that is the basics of creating and accessing arrays. Um, now, just one thing, once you define a value, you can change it. Um, so let's say, you know, I make Jen, Jen here is Jen. Um, I say, oh, well, she, she decides, she, okay, I prefer to be called Jennifer, uh, for say, for professional purposes. And I can say Jennifer. And, uh, and if I print that out, okay, and then we should see the change. Okay, so you can change these values at will. Um, you can't change the type, you can't change the length, um, but you can, you can do a lot with these. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay, so let's move on to 6.2, which is where it gets quite interesting. And this is why arrays are so useful. This is, is when we combine them with loops. And this is called traversing arrays. Um, traversing is just a fancy English word uh, for kind of going across so you can traverse a bridge, yeah, that sort of thing. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through each element, and there's a good vocabulary word, each element in the array. In the case of strings, each element was a letter. Okay, but in the case of an array, it could be an int, it could be a double, it could be some object, okay, which is which is which is very very powerful. Excuse me for taking a drink here. So uh, let's take a look. We've got a couple different arrays to choose from. We've got our scores, we've got our string uh, na names, and our cities. So let's try a couple different methods here, and some of these will look familiar. Um, so I'm gonna say for int i equals zero, because it always starts at zero. And I guess let me put that much space in there. Semicolon. Notice i is gonna be less than, we'll do scores for this one, dot length. Okay. Notice it's not less than or equal, it's less than. And it's not minus one. Well, if you do equals, it'd be minus one. But in this case, it's scores dot length. Again, no parentheses, as I mentioned earlier. And then we're going to increment i plus one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say system system 
cut out that print. And I'll say scores. And in this case, I. Okay, so what should happen is I is going to be zero. I'll print score zero. And then I will be one, scores one, two, all the way up to one minus the length of scores. So if you recall, it was there were seven scores. And so then I want to print a little space at the end there. Let's try it. Okay, so you can see we've got score zero, scores one, scores two, scores three, scores four, scores five, and scores six. And that kind of makes it yeah, pretty easy. So imagine now that we can, now we want to do something with the scores, calculate an average, find the sum. Uh, we can do that even if we have seven scores or if we have 7,000 or 7 million scores. Just one change to the code. Actually, we don't even really have to change this code because it's, if we want to go through all of the items, uh, this will work for any size array, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so we can do the same thing, uh, just to show you. Uh, the same thing absolutely will work with uh, strings. So there's no reason it, it has to be uh, integers. So this, this pattern holds out. And so I'm going to go to names. And then down here, I'm going to print names. And let's see what we get here. OK. And again, notice how we have 0, 1, 2, which we defined, uh, or we gave a value to. But because it is uh, an object, it is null, 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 and null because we haven't defined them. OK. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And let's see here. And now, a couple things. Uh, we can also use a while loop. Okay, so for example, int j, I'm going to use j in this case, uh, equals zero because we're going to start at zero. And I can say while j is less than uh, name, names.length. Actually, we'll do cities in this one. Uh, cities. I can just system dot out dot print cities j, okay. and we'll put our little thing at the end here. Oops, that was not it. Okay, I'm gonna run that. We'll compile and run it. Okay, so ooh, now we got a little error. Oh, where I made a mistake there. I did a nice little logic error. Uh, this is a while loop, so I gotta end that. And I forgot to increment j. So I can do j plus plus. Because this is a while loop, not a for loop. Rookie mistake. OK, so we've got Tokyo, Seoul, and Bucharest. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, now things like, you know, we could do things like for i equals names dot length, in this case, minus 1, i is greater than or equal to zero and we can do i minus minus and we could do the names backwards so let me try that real quick okay so we went from six five four three two one zero and then we can iterate or we can traverse them in the opposite order and there may be cases where you need to do that uh, and we'll see later how to actually reverse uh, an array as well okay Moving right along, this is a bit of a longer video, but this is kind of important, and it's something that like, really, really is helpful in uh, simplifying your code and making it very efficient uh, and uh, more maintainable. Okay, so we're on to 6.3. This is called an enhanced for loop. Um, an enhanced for loop, if you've taken, if you studied other computer languages, you might hear this called a for each loop, and this is just a really, really powerful uh, structure and has a lot of use cases. Excuse me, I'm drinking some green tea since I'm in Japan. And so what it lets us do is it lets us iterate through a loop without using an index, which is really pretty cool. So for example, we've got our scores, uh, we've got scores. So I'm gonna say for int score in scores. I'm going to say system.out.print.ln score. OK, 
Okay, so what this does, this is really cool. So I made a new variable here, score. So how you would read this to yourself, for each integer score in scores, print that score. Okay. So again, I'm gonna say it one more time. For each score in scores, that's why I made this plural, make this singular so it's very, very easy to understand what's going on, print that score out. So what it will do is it will start at the beginning, score zero, and go through. Now, if we do this method, we don't have access to the current index. But in this case, we don't need it because we just want to print out all the scores. So let's try that. Okay, so you can see, print them out, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, so no matter what size that array is, it's going to print them all out. Um, I can do the same thing with uh, for string, for example, in, uh, let's do cities. So city in cities, ugh, cities. And system system.out.println city. So this is, you can see this is very, very powerful. This was an object. We could go through each object and call it a certain method, for example. This is very useful when you're programming games. Let's try that. Okay, so you can see how it went Tokyo, Seoul, and Bucharest. So let me paste that. And again, there's not much else to tell about that. Um, it's pretty interesting, but you just notice that the type has to be the same. So scores up here was defined as an, an array of ints. And so down here, it's got to be, oops, excuse me, it's got to be an int as well. Um, cities is an array of strings. So we had to make city a string, which is, you know, fair enough. And probably fairly straightforward. Um, yeah, that's a really, like I said, a really powerful uh, structure and very useful at times. Uh, but in some cases you can't use it because you do need access to that particular index. Okay, the next section is a little bit long. Um, so I'm gonna go through it as fast as I can, as quickly as I can. Uh, there are some standard algorithms or just standard things that you'll end up doing a lot in computer programming. And there's, there are a number listed in the uh, I'm going to put it in the uh, guide from the AP people. And I'm going to go through most of them. Uh, the only one I, I didn't get was the mode one. And I, I, I meant to look it up, but I did, just did not have time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through uh, several of them. And then you can watch and hopefully learn a little bit something. I recommend doing the coding bat exercises if they're still available. Because uh, they're pretty, pretty good at helping you through this kind of stuff. Okay, so the first one is determining a maximum or minimum value. Okay. Um, so let's say, let's see what we got here. Let's say, hmm, do averages. So I'm gonna say int averages equals, well, let's, yeah, because I don't wanna use scores again because I already defined it. And I'm going to use this way of defining it. I'm going to just throw a bunch of averages in. Let's do uh, 87, uh, 45, uh, 75, let's see, 99, and 93, and let's say, I don't know, 78. Whatever, just pick some random numbers here, basically. So I've got an array of averages, and I want to find the maximum or the minimum value. In this case, I'm just going to show you maximum. Minimum works almost exactly the same. So in a case like this, to be as efficient as possible, what we want to find, at least, we want to find the maximum. So I need to store that information. So I can say maximum, just to make it easy. I call it max, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. I like to type things out. And what I'm going to say is, we know it's got to be one of these values. It's got to be one of them. So for efficiency's sake, what we would just do is we'd say the maximum equals averages zero. Okay. So we assume, we say, okay, let's say we're going to assume the first value is the highest. Now we got to prove that. So to do that, we need to iterate through the rest of these and compare this value to this value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for I, sorry, int i. Now, I don't want to start at 0 because I don't want to compare 87 to itself. I could. It's not going to cause a problem. Um, but we want our code to be as efficient as possible. 
for i equals one, and I'm gonna say i is less than averages dot length and i plus plus. Okay. So I'm gonna say if averages i oops, is greater than maximum, then that's our new maximum. Maximum equals averages i. Okay, does that make sense? So we assume that 87 is our highest. Then we start at 45. Is 45 greater than 87? Nope. Come back. Is 75 greater than 87? Nope. Is 99 greater than 87? Yes, it is. If so, we say, okay, the, maximum, the new maximum is now 99. So we run through the whole loop. We do have to check them all. Then we can do system.system.out.println. Uh, I say the maximum is quote plus x plus quote period. I do like to do complete sentences, and that should give us the maximum. So let's run that and see what happens. Hopefully there's no errors. Okay, so you can see the maximum is 99. It did find that for us, which is pretty cool. Okay, now again, you can do the same thing with minimum, except you make this minimum, and then this would be less than instead. Okay, but we'll stick with maximum for this one. Okay, so that was one. Next one is, what do we got here? There were quite a few listed. Um, okay, computing a sum or average, okay? So, sum uh, or average, okay? And this is a pretty straightforward one, okay? So first we're gonna make, a, I'm gonna make a list of, well, I'll, let's do doubles. Uh, we'll say doubles, double, <laughs> double. Uh, costs equals, and I'm just gonna put a bunch of costs in. Uh, so let's say 4.99, uh, 3.99, you know, 99. 21.99 and prices in America are always 99 cents and let's say two dollars for your newspaper subscription and what we want to find is we want to find the sum and we want to find the average so I'm going to say double sum and like right now we don't know what it is and I'm going to say I can do it like this double average equals zero uh, actually they're doubles so just to be consistent I'm going to put 0.0, .0. Now, what I need to do is I need to go through each of these, okay, and add up, add each of these to the sum. And when I'm done, I can calculate the average. Now, a couple ways to do this. We could do 4 int i, blah, 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 blah. But here's a question we need to ask ourselves. Are we going through every single item? The answer is yes. Are we going through every single item in order? The answer is yes. If those two things are true, uh, well, second thing is, do we need to reference another item from another item? For example, do I need to know that 399 comes after 499? Does the order matter? And if the answer to that one is no, then I can use an enhanced for loop. So I'm going to say double cost costs. And again, if you keep it the English correct, it'd be much easier. So for each cost in costs, I'm going to say sum plus equals cost. That cost. Now, once I have the sum, now I can calculate the average. I say average equals sum divided by cost.length. Now, I could have put here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is fine. This will work. But what if I added another thing here? I'd have to change the code here. So it's always better just to put cost.length. Um, it'll make your code just you're going to avoid a lot of errors. Anytime you can avoid hard coding a value that doesn't that that could possibly change, uh, you want to do that. So like with sum, we always have to start at zero. Um, now average actually could be anything because we're going to change it here, but just logically it makes sense to make it zero. Okay. So then now I can print this out. Print ln. Uh, what we're we doing? Sum. Yeah. Plus sum. And I can do system.out.println, what we got here, average plus average, blah, 
Let's average. Okay, let's run it and test it. Now, I don't know the answers, but I'm hopefully we'll get no errors and it should look logical. So the average is 6.792. The sum is 33, and that looks about right. Um, I didn't really check it, but yeah, I think that's probably going to be correct. Let me add a little print L in. I could have put the slash n up here, but that's fine. I'll keep it consistent. Um, okay, so yeah, so we've we've done that one. So we've done that one now. Um, yeah, the next one is determine if one element has a particular property. Um, let's see here. So we're trying to find out if an element has a particular property. So I write that down. Determine if one element has a particular property. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the costs again. And so what I want to do is I'm going to say I'm going to find out if any of these costs are over ten dollars. Okay. So I'll say actually I'll say over nine ninety nine. So that's ten or higher. Okay. So what I need to do is I'm going to make a boolean. Okay. Say is over, let's see, let's say 10, just to make it easy, 10, okay? And I'm going to assume that it's false, because I haven't found one yet. I don't know if one exists, but I do want to know if it does exist. So I'm going to set this equal to false. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through, I'm going to traverse the array, I should probably use that name, nomenclature, and I'm going to see if it meets that criteria. So again, same thing. Do I need to go through every item? Yes. Uh, am I going from start to finish? Yes. Do I need to know which follows which? No. I'm just checking each one as an individual. So I'm going to say for cost, oops, for int, sorry, this is uh, double, cost, in costs. So I can say if the cost is greater than uh, I'll say 9.99 just to make it easy. So as long as I have one, I say is over 10 equals true. Now at this point, I'm going to try to throw in a break. Actually, I'll leave it. I'll leave it without the break for now, and I'll throw the break in just to see what happens. I haven't actually tested that one yet, uh, but I'm assuming it'll work a certain way. Okay, did we see anything? Oh, we didn't print. We didn't print out the result. So if is over ten, so if that's true, uh, system dot out. I'll just paste that. Uh, is in, it's in over. Actually, it's technically nine ninety nine, but we'll leave it at that. Um, and we can put else. There are no items over 9.99. Okay, so again, we're only looking, it doesn't matter, as long as there's one, okay, there is an item over 9.99. Now, it's always good to test your code. Okay, so what I could do is I could go up to here and I could change this to 8.99. So it's really, it's really good practice to test your code to make sure that it is functioning correctly. And you should also test the following case, 9.99, in case you made a mistake. Okay, and I might wanna do 10, 0, 0, just because that's the next value. Just go ahead and test that. Okay, there is an item over 9.99. All right, okay, so let's take a look at the next one, which is determine if all elements have a property. So this is very, very similar to this one uh, in the case where you're looking at if one element has a property. So in this case, we're trying to prove that it's true. There is an element that has this property. But in this case, we're trying to prove if all elements have that property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say Boolean is under 10. Okay. And we're going to assume that it's true. We only need to find one false, and then we know that it is not true. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and do my four. 
because again, I'm going through all of them uh, start to finish. I don't need to know what order. I don't need to know that, you know, I don't need to know 399 follows 499. And so I'm going to go ahead and just iterate through that the same way. Now I could do it with an index, no problem. Uh, so for, uh, what's this, double cost in costs. And I'm looking for all elements under 10 in this case. So what I can say here, I'm just looking for one that is over 10. So if cost, uh, I'll say is over 10, and then I can just say is under 10 equals false. I only need to find one that's not under 10. So again, the same thing I can do is if is under 10, uh, can I close that? Nope. Uh, System.out.println. And we'll say, you know, uh, all items under 10. We'll say 10.00. So that's a pretty simple one. And else, either they're all under 10 or they're not. Else system. And out dot print ln all items not not under ten. Okay, so again we need to test this, of course. I'm gonna test that in a second. And I do realize I missed a little something in the last one. Not, nothing major, but just a little little tidbit. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it and see what happens. Okay, it says all items under 10. And it printed that twice, which is not quite, oh, that's, that's why, why did I do that? I wanted to, yeah. And especially as the video gets longer, um, yeah, I tend to make more and more mistakes. Um, so if we look at this, where's our cost at? Um, yeah, so are all items under 10? You can see here, the answer is no, okay, so, Let's check, check our code. Ah, so greater than 10. So I should make that greater than or equal to 10. Because we're only looking for one. And this is, this is a good thing about testing. You need to test those edge cases, they're called. Um, so I'm gonna go back up to here. I'm gonna change this to 999 again. So we have a case where we, we have one that's exactly 10. We have a case where they're all under 10. And this is where we should see all under 10. Good, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this 19.99 and go ahead and see what we get out of that one. Okay, so we are getting the proper response. And it's very important to check your code. Uh, beginners like to assume, oh, I think I programmed it right. They check one case, oh, it's working. They don't check all the cases and then they have problems later. Um, the next one is access all consecutive pairs of elements. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant. So I'm making my best guess here. Uh, two pairs of elements. Okay, so what I do is I make some strings, uh, an array of strings, I should say, called foods. And I populated that ahead of time with, uh, I just went with apple, uh, banana. I know, really original. Cucumber. Uh, I didn't know anything that started with a D, so I went to egg. And can't have eggs without ham. Um, yeah, so we'll go with that. So I've got a string of, I got an array of strings, I should say. And now what I want to do is I want to access consecutive pairs. So for example, I want to print apple and banana together. And then I can either do banana and cucumber and cucumber and egg, or I could do apple and banana, then cucumber and egg. Actually, there's an uneven number, so maybe that's not possible. So in this case, I do need to use a normal for loop. Uh, so for int i equals zero, i is less than foods. I'm gonna put my dot length, yeah, length. I'm gonna put minus one here, and I'll, you'll see why in a second. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say system dot out dot print ln. And I'm gonna say foods i uh, plus. I'll put a little dash here. Doesn't matter. Plus foods i plus one. 
Okay? So you can see the reason, instead of putting length here, which would go all the way to ham, I need to stop one early because egg plus one. If I do ham plus one, I'm gonna get an array out of bounds exception. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, apple, banana, banana, cucumber, cucumber, egg, egg, and ham. And yeah, that one is that. Again, I think that's what that means, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. But it's a good thing to practice anyway, just so you don't go over the end of the array. And there's some questions, there's multiple choice questions that you know, make you have to look at this and make sure you don't do that. Okay, in the interest of just kind of saving a little bit of time and just kind of getting, getting through this, um, I've gone ahead and I've typed all the code in. Uh, and I'm just gonna go through and kind of explain how everything works real quickly. Um, so basically this next one is determining the presence or absence of duplicate elements. So basically what we have to do is we have to start with the first element. So in this case, it's the Hulk. And then we have to compare the Hulk to every other element after that and see if they're equal. If they're equal, then we have a duplicate element. Okay, so, and then once we're done checking all the, the Hulk ones, we move on to the Flash. And then we check everything from Flash onwards uh, to see if it's a duplicate. We don't need to check backwards from flash because we've already checked Hulk and flash going forward. So watch what we do here uh, is we, we start our first loop here and we go from zero all the way to the end. And then we go the internal loop. We start from here plus one. So that's why I got K equals I plus one. And we go all the way to the end and we check if they are equal or not. Um, and then once it comes around, when we're on flash, so I is one, K is gonna be two, and we go all the way to the end, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so let's uh, give it a shot and see what happens. You'll see some other output from the other ones, but that's okay. So you can see here, uh, are there duplicates? False, because there are no duplicates. Now let's say we get rid of the Daredevil and we put Hulk in there again. And so we go ahead and run it, and we should see true. Okay, so we do have some duplicates. Okay, next one is determining oops, determining the number of elements that meet a certain criteria. So what I've done is I've created a, an array of uh, strings, genders, M and F, representing male and female. And so what we wanna do is we wanna determine the number. So since we haven't started yet, we don't know what the number is, so we're gonna set that at zero. So let's say we're looking at the number of female board members uh, in this case. And so we iterate through the entire loop, or through the entire array, excuse me, and we check and see if the gender, in this case, each element or item, however you want to put it, is equal to the condition, which in this case is F for female. And if it is, we, we increment number of females, we complete the loop, and then we print out the result. Now, I could have used an enhanced for loop here, and the reason is that I want to search every element and the order I search them doesn't matter. Uh, but this one works as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And we should get one, two, and three because there are three female board members. Now let's go ahead and change this condition. Well, let's not change condition. Let's change this to F and just see if we get an extra uh, F female. Okay, you see now we have four female board members. So it's good to see some good gender representation there. Okay, moving on, uh, shifting array elements. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be shifting left, uh, but you can use the same pattern for shifting right, basically. So we've got an array of letters, uh, they're strings, but uh, letters, S-H-A-R-K, and we wanna shift them to the left. So the S is gonna be at the end, and we're gonna have H-A-R-K and S. So the problem with this is, or at least the way I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna start at index one, and then I'm gonna say this equals this, okay? Then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna go up one, I'm gonna say that this equals this, I'm gonna say that this equals this, this equals this, and then I'm done. But what happens is, because the first thing I did was I changed this S to an H, I've lost the S. So that's why I have here this string temp letter, equals letter zero. So I'm gonna be saving this before I do anything. And then I'm gonna iterate through from the first index, not zero index, but from index one to the end, shifting everything over to minus one. And I could have done it a little bit differently, but that's the way I did it here is fine as well. 
Uh, and then at the very end, once I'm done with the loop, I put the temp letter, which was the zeroth element, at the new end. I changed that last letter. And then here I'm just printing everything out, and then you should see H, A, R, K, and S. And I think you already see it down below, but it's always nice to check that. Okay. And then the last thing is reversing the order of elements. Um, so you can see here I've got some names, and this actually came from one of the uh, multiple choice questions in the reviews, and uh, it's pretty interesting actually. So we could have done it a longer way, but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be iterating from the zero element to the middle element. In this case, it's canon. Okay, so that's why we have length divided by two. Because this is an integer, instead of being 2.5 or 3.5, whatever it is, it's going to be go down to three, which is what we want. And then, so what I do is I store this one. So we're starting with this. I store it in a temporary variable like we did in the previous one. And then I say that this equals the length, which would be plus one, minus one, and minus i. Since i is zero, I'm going to say that this equals this. So Varshani overwrites an. Okay? And then inside the loop this time, then I say that last element is now temp student name. So I'm basically swapping this one and the last one. I'm going to swap this one and the one next to it, swap this one and then this one, and then finally it's done because we're not going to get up that far, okay? because we went to half instead of going all the way through. And what that should do is reverse the string, okay? or reverse the array of strings, I apologize. Okay, so we have everything in reverse order. Okay, so I know it was a little bit quick on the last few, but uh, you know, go back, watch the video, you can kind of see how it works. You have the code, and hopefully that will become clear to you. Thanks so much.